God's got a plan. Everybody say God's got a plan. But you see, also the devil's got a plan. And he is pouring out his fury and his wrath, and he's doing everything that he can to stop the church from rising. He's putting fear in people. If if ever there's anything that I've learned from this time that we've had over the last 11 or 12 months, or whatever it might be, is that people are so full of fear. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you really look at it, when it first came out, they said that between, I think, 5,000 and 150,000 people, or 50, 000, between 50,000 and 150,000 people would most probably die in Australia. It's been nowhere near that. But it was fear. Fear in the hearts of people that they didn't really know how to how to act, what to do. People wearing masks, and goodness knows what. And, and I guess you've got to be careful. You know, there's a, there's a scripture that I've got in the front of my notes here, and I see it every Sunday before I preach or whenever I'm reading. It says Proverbs 29 verse 2. It says, "When the righteous are in authority." The people rejoice. If there's one thing that the enemy is wanting to steal from every Christian is their God-given authority. You might not think you have authority, but God gave you authority. He said, I give you authority to trample over all the works of Satan. To trample on serpents and scorpions. That's the spirit world. And over all the works of Satan. I believe that this, what we're seeing now, is Satan pouring out his fury in his wrath. Yeah. But you see, if the church loses its authority and doesn't understand who it is, well then the, the wicked rule. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. When the wicked man is ruling over the nations of the world today, and as the Antichrist, I don't care, there's a group of men, wealthy men, wealthy people, women and men, most probably, powerful people that have an agenda. Their agenda is world control. Yeah. What we've seen over the ages as men rose up to rule the world, to conquer the world, Hitler, all these guys, that hasn't changed because you see, that is the spirit of the Antichrist. And it's still very, very much alive. And you and I as Christians, I've got to learn to rise up and take authority and be who God has called us to be. When I got born again, I got born again in a Methodist church. Within a week, we were in the Assemblies of God church because I wanted to get water baptized and my, the church, the Methodist church, only believed in sprinkling. I'm a, only a week old Christian and God's speaking to me about being fully immersed, going through the wars of baptism as a believer. The church, the Assemblies of God Church, that was an amazing church. It was a beautiful church. It was a great church. It was nowhere near where God really wanted it to be. Can you catch what I'm saying here? It did not resemble I, I could not give the degree or the percentage, but it was nothing really like the day of Pentecost. It was nothing really like the early church where demons were being cast out and healings and deliverances and goodness knows what. It was just a nice church. We saw a bit of a move of God as, as, we, as we moved on and we started to see Trevor Chandler came and into our country and brought joy and victory and we started to see deliverance and we started to see 
people uh, healed and, and uh, different things started to happen and Clark Taylor rose up and we saw a, a, a miracle move of, of healing and, and uh, different things like that. But still, we never ever reach what I believe God really wants us to reach. Amen. I'm not being critical to any of the churches. We were all doing the best we could. We're doing what we thought was the greatest thing we could do. We saw a move of God. But friend, I want to tell you today that there's more. There's more that God has for you and I. But what the enemy wants to do is he wants to stop us. He wants us to, to sort of go to sleep. See, God has got a plan for man. Satan has a plan for man. And let me just quickly uh, look in uh, Genesis uh, 126. We all know it so very, very well. And, uh, but I want to read it to you. See, when God made me, when God made me, and in verse 26 he said, And God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. So when God created man, he gave him authority. He gave him authority because he needed to have that authority. See, if there's one thing that I believe the church has left behind is our authority as a believer and our words can be so powerful and so so ooh. if you catch what i'm saying here see god has a plan for mankind to be successful he wants us to be creative he wants us to be achievers he wants us to triumph he wants wants everything in Ephesians 4 8 it says and then God gave gifts to man he gave gifts ministry gifts healing gifts deliverance gifts creative gifts gifts to get wealth music drama hospitality all gifts to be used in the church I, I thank God that when God uses things he talks about farms he talks about growth he talks about about the body of christ he talks because we are a body and i've got parts of my body that i don't pay a lot of attention to but they're very very important to me and then if you understand that then we've all got parts of every person i don't care who you are every person that's born on this planet has got gifts in their life a lot of those gifts lay dormant. A lot of those gifts are never ever used. There's uh, people like uh, Whitney Houston, Elvis Presley, Katy Perry. All these people, their gifts were started in the church. We have had lunch with Katy Perry's parents. They're both in the ministry. Have powerful, powerful gifts on their life. Katy had a powerful gift of music but the world got hold of it while we were having lunch or we were, we were informed that that katie's dad had had his briefcase case stolen and it had a thirty-seven thousand dollar rolex watch in it plus finance and cash and other things that so much finance so much gifting so much life that they had but they're using it for the world. You see, Satan's plan is to stop the gifts flowing so that there will be lack. So that there will be lack in the church. Gifts can be used for self, can be used for many other things. But they can have little value. You know what I believe today? That there are gifts in this church right now that have never ever been used. That God wants to breathe on wants to move on and, and and get a hold today we're out there in the prayer meeting and we're all praying 
But you see, because of the situation today, Janine, a lot fell on her life. She had to do the table, she had to do the communion, she had to do this, she had to do all these sort of things. And when she spoke to me, she said, Neil, I've got a lot of things to do, but I'm only one person. So we're out in the prayer meeting, we're praying, and I said, okay, it's great, we're praying, but I want to tell you that there's a lady up there that needs help. So I took the whole prayer meeting out of the prayer meeting, and we went and we started to help Janine, amen. Yeah. There are, but you see, there are things there that, that you'll be amazed what you can do if you allow God to get a hold of your life. I mean, Satan's plan is to lull the church to sleep through intimidation and fear of man. I want to ask the question, anybody here ever had a fear of man? That was my greatest fear. I can remember the first time somebody handed me a microphone in front of me. <laughs> the first preach I ever preached, I had five major points in the message. I went for about three minutes in my message and realized I went through the whole five points. <laughs> and I had nothing left. Fear of man. Fear of, I don't know what. But you see, what I've realized is most of us are like the rest of us. And if we can start to overcome, and you know, sometimes when I've preached, I've said something, and, and mostly today when I go home, I've mostly said some things about toilet paper or something like that. And I'll go home and I'll, I'll try and have a and I say, why did you say that? Why did you do that? Now I'd remind you to, so you remember. But, but there's a good chance that most of, you, most of you had already forgotten about it. Not now. But not now. No, no. I'm making a point. <laughs> so, the fear of man and the fear of failure and all these things. I believe that God is going to start to move by spirit and stir these things up. Amen? Yes. I believe. How many people believe that there's going to come a move of the spirit? Yes. yes. See, when the move of God comes, I believe that God will expect you and I to rise up. It's very, very interesting the time that we're living in right now. And I want, to, I want to make a statement today. Jesus is our man. Yes. Donald Trump is not our man. He is a man. But when you get your eyes on Donald Trump as the answer to our problems, we are in trouble. Donald Trump is a man, but Jesus is our man. I might say that a few times today while I'm sharing. Because I believe that Jesus is our man. We've all got gifts. So the goal of intimidation is to make us give up our authority. I'd like you to write that down in your mind anyhow. It's to give up. So we give up our authority, our position. And when you give up your authority, it renders the gift on your life inoperable or impotent. It just doesn't function. The answer to intimidation is boldness. <clears throat> How many people like the spirit of boldness? The spirit of boldness. Boldness. Not stupidity. Not, not just being stupid and making, doing stupid things. But having a spirit of boldness, that when, when the enemy comes, you, you can stand. When he tries to tell you, 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 you'll never make it, we don't listen to it. The answer to intimidation is boldness. In 2 Timothy 1 7, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, of intimidation, but of power, love, and a sound mind. What has God given you? Power love and a sound mind 
To overcome, to be bold, we must understand where our strength comes from. If you understand where your strength comes from, then you can draw upon it. If you know where your source is, if you know, if you know where the power is, I believe the day that the power that we need is in the Holy Spirit. Not in necessarily more learning or more teaching, though that's good and I'm not knocking it, but it's no substitute. Knowledge is no substitute for the power of God. We've got to have the power of God. We've got to understand where our strength comes from. The gift that's inside us. In Psalm 27, verse 1, one, David said, The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. See, I, I went to a four-wheel drive place the other day and I've got a ute, as you know, I've got a canopy over the top of the ute. And I've been for a while now looking at the drawers. Told to Greg about drawers and there's you know, those drawers, nice drawers in the back of you. Went along and I and I had a look the other day. You know how many people know it's dangerous to go and have a look. <laughs> but I went and had a look and and, and uh, the next day I took Nancy. I said, I just come on over to the shop, Nancy. <laughs> Oh. So up we go on a show. I said, oh, I don't feel like these drawers. They, they, they look beautiful in the back of my ute. And, and they've got wings, wings on the side. And anyhow, Nancy said, oh, that'd be good. That'd be nice. So immediately, I, I went up to the cashier and I bought it. They said, go around the back and I'll put it in the back of your ute. The guy brought it out on a forklift. <laughs> And puts it in the back of my ute and pulls it out and I shut the door. And so I go home and I look, you know what? I couldn't even get it out of the cardboard box. <laughs> I'm looking at this thing. And I thought, it's not nice in the cardboard box. Right. So I start to try to undo it and I pull it out. And next minute, the thing slipped off the back of the truck. Oh, no. But anyhow, I thought, praise the Lord, I can get the cardboard boxes for now, which I did. <laughs> then I had to pick the whole thing up and put it back in my ute. So anyhow, then I, I go to the place and I said, excuse me, uh, is there anybody that installs these things? She said, oh, yes, there is. She said, but it's cost you $500. Oh, I said, what? I said, oh. She said, but you can find it on Google how to do it. I don't know if anybody realized I'm 81. <laughs> the guy on Google was about 30. And he's there, you know, do this and do that. And I'm doing, I'm looking at it. And, I'm going, oh, okay, this. and then he said, by the way, he said, you need another one or two people to help you do this because they're very heavy. I said, I already know that. I've picked it up before. $500. So I said, okay, let's have a go. I did it on my own. Fear of intimidation. <laughs> no, it was a fear of the $500. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, you'd be amazed what you can do if you really want to do it. Amen? Yes. I'll, I'll go any, I'm going to open up the back of my youth later on and you can have a look at the rooms. <laughs> all there. It's all done nice. But I must say this, because of the canopy, I was in the back of the youth and I had to get underneath somewhere or other to put some bolts in. I got my leg halfway around the neck <laughs> and I couldn't get out. <laughs> and I said, you silly old goat. <laughs> she didn't take out an offering in the church. You would help me pay for it, wouldn't you? <laughs> Intimidation. You see, today we are being intimidated by coronavirus. We're being intimidated by an enemy. We're looking to 
our Prime Minister because he's spirit-filled. He can't really answer the problems either. He's scratching his head. We looked at Donald Trump, and Donald Trump was going to be the answer. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know exactly what's going to happen in America. Anything could happen right now. I, I read so many things and watch so many things on YouTube or Facebook or wherever it is. People send me all this stuff. I, I, I don't know whether I'm Arthur or Martha at the moment. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. With all these different theories and different opinions and different thoughts. But, but friend, there is an antichrist out there that is trying to destroy the church. And David, as a young boy, came onto a scene. You'll find it in the, in the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel 17, 8 and 9. And he comes on the scene and, and there is a Goliath. There is a coronavirus in the valley. There is something there that's saying, fight me. If you beat me, well then I'll serve you. But if you don't beat me, then you will serve me. And what I'm finding is that the nation of Australia is serving a coronavirus that we should have the power of God to overcome and destroy. Amen. David said this. He said, what shall be done to the man who kills this person, who has come to defile the armies of the living God. This coronavirus has come to defile the armies of the living God, the church. The church is in lockdown, churches are closing down, there's a sign on the door, the Catholics are no longer meeting. We went through, I don't know how many months or six or seven weeks where we couldn't come into this building, where they wouldn't allow us in this building. We're serving an uncircumcised Philistine. Amen. See, the armies of the living God, those who had authority, Saul, he would have had generals, he would have had mighty men of valor, he would have had warriors. We heard, we hear of some of the ones later on with David where, where one man uh, killed you know, somebody with, with a sword until the, the sword uh, stuck to his hand. But when another one stood in the little patch as a whole, the town didn't come against him and he fought and he destroyed them. Supernatural power. You see, what I'm talking about, when I say authority, I'm talking about supernatural power authority. I'm not talking about natural authority. Some people have got natural authority. Policemen's got natural authority. But I want to tell you, God has given the church a supernatural authority. You see, when, when he started to speak there, what shall be done to the man? A lot of people there, if you're, you know, they start talking about all, all those interested in the wealth. What shall be done to the man? Who overcomes the works of Satan? I will tell you what shall be done to the man who overcomes the works of Satan. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name, who delivers me, who heals me, who, who does. Just read Psalm 103 of all the things that God wants to do in your life. There. That's there for you and I as we rise up and as we overcome the trials and the temptations and the weaknesses of our flesh and start to stand and not run from the enemy. You see, as soon as young David started to speak and started to say, how dare this uncircumcised Philistine, how dare we come to defile the armies of the living God. Immediately, the weaknesses in the people that were around about him Started to rise up, his brother says, I know who you are, I know your thoughts, I know what you're doing, you insolent thing you are. Who's my last few sheep? So what he's trying to do is pull David down to his level. 
The devil was trying to take people up to his level. Level of faith. David had to stand against his brothers. And he made this statement which was so powerful. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? For in the church, where we are at the moment, has been lulled into a, into a place of, of, of everything's okay. I'm going to church, I'm going to heaven. Friend, I want to tell you, that though that's God's plan for you to go to heaven, that's not God's plan for the church just to sit around and wait for a rapture. It's to become the church. It's to be the church. It's to understand that God has given us authority. Tread on serpents and scorpions over all the works of Satan. And young David there, as he stood there, and he started to understand, and, and he wasn't really interested in, in the finance. Why he was interested in that there was a cause. And friend, I want to tell you that if we, the church, do not rise up, and the present situation with governments and the, the, the Illuminati, the common Rome, or whoever you want to call them, the people that are, that are trying to bring about a one world government, I want to tell you it won't be too long before babies are slaughtered just because they're born a male or a female. And they don't want them. Today, babies that are aborted, and they're aborted alive, and they're left on a cold slab to die. Or they're left in a bucket to die. I want to tell you, friends, that is the tip of the iceberg. It won't be too long before people over the age of 60 or something like that, you go into a hospital with a splinter in your finger, you'll be lucky if you come out. Because they want to get rid of us. Anybody that's got a disability will be just wiped out. The same spirit was on Hitler will be over this nation. People, friend, I want to tell you, it's not just a, a just, we're not just saying words here. It's important for the church to rise up. Yes. Amen. It's important to, to do something that, that seems impossible. Fear says, I can't. Fear says, I, I won't be able to do it. I remember when, when I was asked to do some things in the church, the first thing I had to fight was fear. Fear says, you'll never, you can't do it. But faith says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as, look, friend, I want to tell you, in the natural, I know a natural ability to be able to put that thing together in the back of my truck. But I'll tell you that I stand here and I sit in the back of my truck and it's done, hallelujah. <laughs> Fear says I can do all things through Christ. And I can't, but faith says I can do all things through Christ. You see, when David came on the scene, he saw the Goliath. Really what amazed him was not the size of Goliath. It wasn't even the roar of Goliath. It wasn't the size of his sword. It wasn't the, the, the size of the shield that he had. What amazed David, I believe, was the weakness in the children of God. He was amazed at what he saw, not the size of the giant, but at the reaction of the armies of the living God. They were intimidated by an enemy. I honestly believe that there would have been, I said it before, there would have been many. There would have been many that could have risen up and taken on that Goliath in the power of the Holy Spirit and annihilated them. Amen? You believe that today? But fear and intimidation. I want to tell you today, today many of us run from battles that we shouldn't run from. We've got to start to face some battles. You've got to start to face some things. Then he went to, of course, then Saul uh, come up and said to him, he said, you can't fight any better you. And he had to speak again. He said, 
I feel the lion, I feel the man. Did all these things. See, before he faced the Goliath, he had to face his brother, he had to face the king, and then he had to face the Goliath. He ran towards the Goliath, and the Goliath said, Am I a dog that that send a whip like you? But for another, I don't care. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I'm 81. When we face the devil, he might look at me and say, Am I a dog that sent an old boy like you? Am I but a dog that they send some old fellow like you that's passed to use by day? No, you haven't. I want to stand up and I want to say, I don't care what you say, you foul, stinking, uncircumcised Philistine. I don't come to you with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, devil, you've already been whipped by my mate, but my mate Jesus, he's my man. Hallelujah. Jesus is my man. He's the one I serve. He's the one I put my trust in. He's the one that has annihilated you. He kicked your butt. He made a show of you openly. He displayed you in front of everybody. I want to tell you, devil, he took those epaulets from you. He stripped you of your power. And today, you are finished. Devil, yeah, you come to me with us. The, the, the enemy said, you come to me with a spear and a spear. So they said, I'll come in the name of the Lord. Yes. yes. Friends, we've got to somehow other put faith back in that. I come in the name of the Lord of us. I come in the, I, I, I want a fresh encounter. I want a fresh anointing. I want a fresh impartation from the power of God. I want a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. I've got another page there, but it can wait. <laughs> Because what's going to happen right now cannot wait. Amen. How many people want a fresh encounter with God? Come on. How many people want a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost? How many people would be honest enough to say, Neil, I, I, need, I, need, I need a kick in the I, I need, a, I need a, a fresh awakening. I need to stir it up a bit. I need to be challenged. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't want to be the, the tail. I want to be the head. I want, to be, I want to be the one there that's, that's singing the praises. I want to be the one that's testifying. I want to be the one that, that's out there telling people about Jesus because I've got a story to tell. Yes. you got a most Christians today and say, what's God doing? <laughs> what's God doing? <laughs> oh, no, 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 I don't know. Well, he's up in the cloud. No, no. Man, the power of God, hallelujah. I went out there the other day and I saw somebody and I prayed over them and the power of God hit them and the anointing touched them and oh, hallelujah, they got healed. Hallelujah! Yeah. And they gave their life to Jesus. That's what it's all about. That is the church. You see, if the church loses its flavor, it's like salt. Useless. I want to be stirred. I want to be stirred again and again and again. I thank you for these two chairs in the front here. <laughs> I could feel a stirring coming on. Anybody feel a stirring coming on? How many people are getting ready? How many people feel a burr in your undies? <laughs> you need a burr in your undies, you can't sit still. You just can't, you just got to do something about it. <laughs> Betty, 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 Betty. <laughs> oh, shaka woundy, hallelujah. hallelujah. Will somebody praise the Lord in this house? Amen. Amen. Come on, how many stand to our feet? How many people want a depression encounter? An impartation of the Holy Ghost. The anointing come down and touch your life again. Stir you, raise you up, challenge you, touch you again. I need a touch from the mighty power of God. I need a touch from the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, man. Just come out the front as fast as you can. Get out here as fast as you can. Oh, come on, man. Come on, let's believe God. Let's believe God. Hallelujah. Sharon, the fresh mantle is coming on your life. Sharon, come out here. There's a fresh mantle that's coming on your life. 
you've prophesied over the people before, but I'll tell you, as you prophesy over the people, you're going to see something happen. You're going to watch people change before your very eyes. Because you see that there's a fresh mantle that's coming over your life, a fresh anointing that's coming over your life, something so fresh and so powerful. You've said words, and sometimes you've said in your heart, man, I prophesied over that person, and I spoke things that... Nothing seems to have happened. Nothing seems to have changed. They're, they're just the same. But I'll tell you, it's not going to be like that anymore, girl. You're going to prophesy. You're going to see change. 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 Because the power of God is in the house. Amen. God, lift up your hands right now. Glory to God. Shukarandi. Thank you.